Hey everybody and welcome to Latter-day Divers where we dive into the words of ancient and modern prophets. My name is Will Perez and I'm going to get right to it today. I've got an awesome conference compilation referencing Emma Smith and Doctrine and Covenants 25. There's so much more to Emma than DNT 25 and you know that. Just such a, a, an incredible woman and key to the restoration of the gospel. I want to just share three quick awesome facts with you that I learned from an article written by Amy Easton Flake and Rachel Cope included in the book Producing Ancient Scripture. First, Emma was heavily involved in the restoration and in the translation of the Book of Mormon. It was Emma who went with Joseph to finally retrieve the plates from the hill. It was Emma who scribed maybe even up to two-thirds of the 116 lost pages. And it's heartbreaking to think that after Emma labored and then lost her first baby, that she would then have to deal with the loss of another labor, the, the manuscript. Joseph didn't even want to break the news to her. He said, this will kill Emma. She labored and lost first her infant and then these 116 pages that she was invested in. Doctrine and Covenants 25 calls Emma to be a scribe for Joseph, but the 1835 canonized version adds the line, while there is no one to scribe for him. This just reinforces the stereotype that Emma was kind of a substitute or fill-in scribe for her husband, as opposed to the fact that she was the scribe for a while before Oliver and others joined in. In fact, throughout Joseph's ministry, his scribes were often his most valued associates, colleagues, friends, and connected to service in the first presidency. Although scribes were common at the time, employed by politicians or other prominent figures, it was decidedly a male occupation. But clearly, the Lord thought Emma was capable, and even more so. Lastly, in DNC 25, the Lord invites Emma to continue to break down barriers. For example, her assignment of creating a hymnal was typically a task associated with male clergy of the time. And again, putting ourselves in the context of that time, the assignment that she receives or the calling to exhort and to expound scripture sounds like the duties given to male Methodist traveling preachers. Cope and Flake write that consequently, Emma and others reading the Revelation may have seen her assignment to each of these exclusively male functions as an indication that God did not abide by 19th century gender prescriptions. Emma, this revelation makes clear, is not merely an appendage to Joseph, but rather an important actor in her own right. And we would do well to remember these things about the daughters of God now and forever. Thank you for being on the channel. Please like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Keep helping us grow. Come back soon for more Gospel Dives. And if you're ready to hit up conference for some awesome clips about Emma and DNT 25, then let's dive. So two blasts of dive alarm, password dive, dive. Dive, dive. I suppose that Emma Smith had more than her share of frustration and disappointment. Her life couldn't have been easy as she suffered persecution along with her husband, the prophet. It is reported that shortly before his martyrdom, Joseph sent a message to Emma in answer to her request for a blessing. He was not able to give her a blessing, but told her to write one. And when he saw her again, he would sign it. I am impressed with the faith and the righteous intent revealed in her words. I desire the Spirit of God to know and understand myself. I desire a fruitful, active mind that I may be able to comprehend the designs of God when revealed through His servants. I particularly desire wisdom to bring up all the children that are or may be committed to my charge in such a manner that they will be useful in the kingdom of God. I desire that I may wear a cheerful countenance and be a blessing to all. I desire with all my heart to honor and respect my husband. Sisters, shall we not go on in so great a cause as we read in the Doctrine and Covenants? Go forward and not backward. Courage and on, on to victory. Let your hearts rejoice and be exceeding glad. How often are we so focused on pursuing the so-called good life that we lose sight of eternal life? It is the fatal spiritual equivalent of selling our birthright for a mess of pottage. 
The Lord revealed the remedy for such spiritual disaster when he counseled Emma Smith to lay aside the things of this world and seek for the things of a better. And Christ provided the pattern, declare, declaring prior to Gethsemane, I have overcome the world. The only way that we may overcome the world is by coming unto Christ. And coming unto Christ means walking away from the world. It means placing Christ and Christ only at the center of our lives so that the vanities and philosophies of men lose their addictive appeal. Satan is the God of Babylon or this world. Christ is the God of Israel and his atonement gives us power to overcome the world. This is not to diminish the lives of countless good women throughout this world, but we are unique. We are unique because of our covenants, our spiritual privileges, and the responsibilities attached to both. We are endowed with power and gifted with the Holy Ghost. We have a living prophet to guide us, ordinances that bind us to the Lord and to each other, and the power of the priesthood in our midst. In July of 1830, at the beginning of the restoration of His Church, the Lord selected His first female leader, and in a revelation to her, He said, I speak unto you, Emma Smith, my daughter. For verily I say unto you, all those who receive my gospel are sons and daughters in my kingdom. The History of Relief Society teaches us that our Heavenly Father knows His daughters. He loves them. He has given them specific responsibilities, and He has spoken to and guided them during their mortal missions. Additionally, the History of Relief Society elevates and validates the standing of women and demonstrates how they work in companionship with faithful priesthood leaders. As the Lord began restoring His Church through the Prophet Joseph Smith, He again included women in a pattern of discipleship. A few months after the Church was formally organized, the Lord revealed that Emma Smith was to be set apart as a leader and teacher in the Church and as an official helper to her husband, the Prophet. Her calling to help the Lord build His kingdom in that calling, she was given instructions about how to increase her faith and personal righteousness, how to strengthen her family and her home, and how to serve others. I hope my granddaughters will understand that from the day the gospel began to be restored in this dispensation, the Lord has needed faithful women to participate as His disciples. That first group of women understood that they had been given authority to teach, inspire, and organize the sisters as disciples to assist in the Lord's work of salvation. The Lord instructed Emma Smith to receive the Holy Ghost, learn much, lay aside the things of this world, seek for the things of a better, and cleave unto her covenants with God. Learning is integral to progression especially as the constant companionship of the Holy Ghost teaches us what is needful for each of us to lay aside, meaning that which could distract us or delay our progression. As we do so, honoring and living the Lord's commandments, we are promised, even as Emma Smith, a crown of righteousness. My personal admission today is that as a woman, I didn't realize earlier in my life that I had access through my covenants to the power of the priesthood. Sisters, I pray that we will recognize and cherish priesthood power as we cleave unto our covenants, embrace the truths of the scriptures, and heed the words of our living prophets. One of the most important aspects that I I'm reminded of when they come to this restoration of the priesthood site is the important role that women played in the restoration. When Joseph first started to translate the Book of Mormon, who did the writing? Well, he did a little, but not much. Emma stepped in. And then I think of Joseph went into the woods to pray near their home in Palmyra, New York. Where did he go? He went to the sacred grove. Why did he go there? Because that's where Mother went when she wanted to pray. Those are just two of the women who had key 
roles in the restoration of the priesthood and, the, and in the restoration of the church. Seeing women as vital participants is not about creating parity, but about understanding doctrinal truth. Rather than establishing a program to bring that about, we can actively work to value women as God does, as essential partners in the work of salvation and exaltation.